Okay, Success Nation, this is your host Michael Nguyen from Asian Success Show, where successful entrepreneurs show you how to build a company and achieve success. I'm so thrilled to have Sarika today. Sarika is the founder and CEO of RankAndStyle.com, uh, which simplifies shopping by bringing users unbiased, data-driven top 10 list of the best fashion and beauty products. Uh, she was used to responsible for growing and managing over $20 million in business segments in London and New York. And recently, she made it to the top 100 most creative person by Fast Company in 2014. Sarika, welcome to the show. Um, so Sarika, i just given our listener just an overview about you. So take a minute and tell us that you, about you personally because we want to get to know you. And then uh, give us an overview about uh, Rank and Style. Sure. We launched Rank and Style a year ago, um, and I'm the CEO, one of the founders. And um, here, I had a business development. I lead the charge on fundraising, strategy, partnerships, and sales, and beyond. Um, truly, at a startup, you do a little bit of everything. Prior to founding Rank and Style, I spent the last five years at another venture-backed startup here in New York and mm -hmm. London. And prior to that, I was actually an attorney. I practiced um, corporate, international um, capital markets law in London for three years at a law firm, um, which was wonderful experience and just learning about how the world um, works and um, and great skills in uh, research, writing, and negotiation. And prior to that, I attended um, Columbia University here in New York at the University of Michigan for law school. What was your aha moment when you uh, and your co-founders uh, found RankinStyle.com? Yeah, so maybe I might just start by telling you a little bit about Rank and Style and then and kind of the problem that we think we're solving. So as you mentioned, Rank and Style publishes multiple daily top 10 lists or rankings of the 10 best products in every fashion and beauty product. Think jeans, sneakers, lipsticks, and beyond. Um, and what makes us different, though, is that those lists are not based on my own personal opinions. Um, they're not advertising, and instead, they're based on real data. We basically built the technology to methodically search and aggregate publicly available information, things like user reviews, um, a product's popularity, editorial picks from a diverse and expansive base of sources. And we bring all of that together to rank the 10 best. We, we think of ourselves as sort of halfway between a consumer reports for fashion and beauty and BuzzFeed in that everything we do is lists. And for us, the reason we really started our rank install was um, we wanted to simplify how consumers discovered their next favorite beauty product. We wanted to change how consumers researched consumer products. And then lastly, we wanted to add a degree of objectivity, trust, and transparency uh, to this type of research because it's a space right now that's entirely dominated by subjective and editorial perspectives. And the reason I, for me, the aha moment, I was online and I was um, going on a vacation um, to Thailand and I typed in best natural sunscreens because I wanted to buy an organic product to put on my face. And what I got back in Google was just overwhelming and chaotic. Um, there are so many people with really helpful opinions on what the best natural sunscreens were, but no one that was methodically collecting all those opinions and aggregating them and presenting them in the form of definitive insights. Um, and that's really what our aha moment was. I was thinking about how when you want to buy a new camera or a vacuum cleaner, you just type in best digital cameras under $500 and you get very structured research. And I thought, you know, women who control 85% of consumer spending in the U.S. Um, deserve the same for other consumer purchases when they're buying jeans or sneakers. And I thought, you know what, maybe technology can create that same experience for them. And so that was really my aha moment. Um, I went to college with one of my founders at Columbia, and the other um, co-founder was an attorney in London at the same time I was. not So we just all kind of linked up. Excellent, excellent. So what was the number one lesson that you learned from that aha moment that you figured out that they saw the chaotic of the world and chaotic of information? And yeah, you know, I, I realized that good ideas are um, really important. I think we have a good idea, but it's all about execution, hard work and persistence and loving what you do because you know, a good idea only gets you um, so far. So my biggest advice to other entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs is um, get excited about your idea. Um, and then just as importantly, get really excited and committed to seeing it through and knowing that it will take 
a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. All of them are worth it if you love your idea and you, you know you believe in it. Um, but the good idea is the easiest part in some ways. Um, it's what comes after the good idea that I think um, is really where the meat of, of finding uh, and launching a successful business comes from. Let me try to yeah. understand. So at Rank and Style, do you guys manually create a top 10 list or you use algorithm or, or data driven or by computers? Use algorithm and technology. That's what makes us totally different. It's all driven by data um, and algorithm and it's all created using technology. We, we have built the technology to collect this data from a really diverse um, base of uh, sources, things that our users trust um, and are very influenced by. We went out and studied our target audience before we launched the business and we said, where do women get their information from? And what we realized was they are very influenced by user reviews. They're very influenced by a product's popularity. They're very interested in what the editors at the large magazines are talking about. So we built the technology to replicate this consumer experience, but to be able to do it quicker, better, faster, and more thoroughly. Guys, you and co-founders, they, you guys are in business, you're practicing law, and then decided to open the technology companies. Can you share with the audience what were some of your fears and doubts about yourself about opening a technology company? You know, I'm switching. I switched really big gears to do what I do. Um, but my view is... Um, so first of all, before doing this, I spent the last five years not as an attorney. I was at a, at a, at a venture-backed company and very much in a business management role. Um, and so I tell people that if you're looking to switch, you know, careers in that regard, you know, get some meaningful, chunky experience before you do it on your own. And I was so fortunate to have received that because it meant I really, I learned the basics um, at a more established company. Um, and then I'm able to apply those learnings and those lessons to my own thing. So it means I avoid, not entirely, but I avoid some basic rookie mistakes because I have that experience. But you know, the other thing is, my view is if you're smart, resourceful, hungry, and passionate, you can do anything. And if you have a solid foundation, um, and you know, law school taught me a lot, being an attorney gave me a thick skin, a hard working one, and just taught me the power of um, pers persistence and hard work. And those are all lessons you apply to anything you do. Um, and um, Lastly, you know, uh, become an expert and become one quickly because, you know, the same question you asked me, I get asked all the time by potential investors, um, partners, you know, wait, how are you skilled to do this? And the only reason I am is because I've come up the learning curve very quickly and I've committed myself to learning that very um, quickly by uh, just throwing myself into this world and in every which way, networking, um, learn reading learning, speaking about it, and talking to others. Let's share with the audience about where Rank and Style is as far as the growth, as far as the number of users, and so that the, they can see the whole pictures of where you guys, you know, growth. Yeah, we, we've been around for a year. Um, we were, we've had some really amazing um, press in our first year. We were on Fox News. We were listed as best of the web by InStyle, listed as the 100 most creative people um, by Fast Company. And most recently, we just won um, a, and were named Founders of the Future by Elle Magazine and Fashion Tech Forum, which is really exciting. Um, we've grown at a really healthy um, pace. We're starting to generate meaningful revenue. And um, we've grown, I think, since the fall, 50% in terms of unique visitors. OK, so you you found problems. You found some chaotic information and the need for that. At, at what point that you think, hey, this, this, this is growing. Something's going to be big. You know, I think you just have to you have to just get it out there and, and, and start talking to people and not be afraid that people are going to say no, that you may have to change your idea slightly, but ultimately, you have, if you believe in it, you'll, it'll get somewhere. And so we just started, um, I'm someone that believes you put your money where your mouth is. And so when you think, you know, it's good to have an idea, but start working on it. Start developing a vision, start developing a business plan, um, and get out there and start talking to people. And you'll learn, um, and you'll start to, um, you know, things will just start to um, grow from there. So we would have one conversation. And someone say, well, you know, that's a really good idea. One of my friends um, is looking to invest in something like that. So you meet them and they may say, you know, I am an investor, but it's not for me. But I have another friend for you. And it just starts to snowball from there. But for me, I believed in the idea. I started to have a couple conversations that um, made me, you know, have the confidence to do this. And before I quit my full-time job, before we raised money, we um, did an alpha test. So we built a basic product on our nights and weekends and self-funded with my own savings um, and went out there and did a test and said, you know, do people actually like this? What can we learn from this? Um, and what should we change and should we continue? And the feedback was really positive, but we learned stuff in that round too. 
And I took that experience and then went back and built a four more complete product and then raised um, investor capital from after I built a basic product. So my number one advice is put your money where your mouth is and then get out there and build something and um, and have some skin in the game and people will start to pick up on that and know that you are serious. Looks like your experience of working with, with venture back uh, companies really helped and build you all the connections. And I'm really fortunate. They're an incredibly supportive team. I'm still in regular contact with them. And, um, you know, I would say that's why it's so good to have that experience because they will be you know, your biggest supporters and a really big support system for you as well. Um, in terms of I constantly am going to them saying, can you help me with this? Which direction should I go in looking for advice? And it's, um, what is your growth strategy in, in, in order to reach more and more users? Yeah. I mean, our biggest strategy is we're currently in the process of, um, are doing kicking off our next fundraising, um, round and we'll use that capital to, um, expand into other verticals and grow our current base. So we, um, want to start tackling other, um, consumer interests. So things like menswear, bridal, maternity, um, home goods. We want to rank the world. I always say that, but we really do. And um, so we just need additional capital for the bandwidth, um, mostly on the technology front, to collect more and more data and use it to provide insights to more diverse audience. You said the company is, is on a mission to rank the world. Can, can you share some light about it? Yeah, look, I believe you know, we live in a world of overwhelming content, choice, and noise, and that problem is only getting um, more severe um, as each day passes, thanks to social and just the internet in general. And um, and that's why I really believe lists, rankings, and concise insights that um, people can trust that are based on aggregated content are truly the way forward. Um, and so that's why we believe so strongly in our mission. And we've had such amazing traction just taking on a very small segment, um, just women's fashion and beauty, that I'm confident if we can apply that same methodology around data-driven objective, um, trustworthy research to other areas where similar issues around so much choice, not enough time, a lot of noise, a lot of content, um, those same problems exist, um, will be very successful um, in, in leveraging what we've done well in this vertical. A woman products with, let's say, an organic uh, sunblock that you want to put on, on your face, would you uh, trust the 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 bot or the algorithm to find the product for you or you would better uh, be more worthy to trust from uh, from a human uh, research. And so what's interesting is that what, what our bot finds is based on human perspectives. So we're just taking into account what users are talking about, but we're multiplying that across a lot more users. So we're taking user reviews from multiple um, sources, department stores, online retailers. We're adding that to the editorial perspective, to what the bloggers' favorites are, to what's selling out the most at all the retailers. So my view is we're amplifying those same individual voices and finding patterns in, in them. And, and the idea is that the best, the best truly rises to the top. And what's nice is that I often go do press interviews at magazines and I'll show them a recent list and they'll say, wow, these really are the best. How did you do that? You know, without testing them yourself. And it's wonderful validation that the algorithm is, is working. I'm not going to suggest we are perfect. No one's perfect. I saw that your co-founders, they, they um, pretty much in, in, in the same skill set that you. Did, you. did you think that you missed some lot of skill set that may push uh, rank and style to another level? Actually, very different um, strengths, um, but, you know, both in terms of our personality and our experience. So Pooja Badlani, our um, chief creative officer, has a deep background in um, front-end web design. She's a designer by trade um, and has worked with a lot of developers on the back end as well. And her real expertise is in the user um, experience. So much of what we're trying to do is simplifying how consumers shop. And so she's done an amazing job of being able to take that theme of simplification and still make a very compelling, um, attractive design for our site. She's um, designing our mobile app. Um, and is leading the charge on redesigning our entire site. So she's really, she's 100% creative design. I don't have that as well at all. Um, my third partner is, um, leads the charge on legal operations. Um, a lot of the work um, where there's a, a you know, really good need for an eye for detail um, and um, you know, understanding the market and, uh, and, um, and expanding, um, you know, allowing us to grow thoughtfully and, and carefully. Um, and she really handles all of that. I, um, I do a lot more of the kind of outside work, the sales, the business development, and um, the strategy. But in that sense, we don't overlap at all. And we all bring very different strengths um, to the table, um, which is, is by design. I wanted to build a team 
where we could tackle pretty much anything in house without having to go out, you know, outside because it's expensive. And uh, I think it's always better to to do your own um, really heavy lifting work early days because you can control it. What is your number one challenge? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think fundraising is hard always. Um, we, you know, um, there's a lot of really great ideas out there and folks that are trying to raise money for them. Um, but I think our second big, um, but we're, we've been successful to date and are really optimistic about this next round. I think the, you know, the other question that we often get is our big value proposition is objectivity uh, to our, our users and um, in that we won't let any personal commercial relationships ever come in the way of that. And, you know, people on the, um, on the outside often ask us, well, how are you going to remain objective as you grow? Um, and look, we're fiercely committed to it. We have policies around it. We have total separation of church and state. We don't take money from, um, you know, from brands at the moment. We're not doing traditional advertising. So we're committed to it. I think one of the biggest challenges is um, people, you know, trusting that because we don't live in a world where people necessarily associate what we're doing with that objectivity. So for me, it's about really coming out and making clear that we are trustworthy. And that really is what this distinguishes us from in a very crowded space. Your number one challenge is to stay objective. Yeah, well, I think it's not its not just to stay objective, but it's to inspire trust in our users. Um, and uh, I have to do that um, by maintaining very strict policies and making sure that we're never um, swayed by commercial temptation. What is the list of three tips that you want to share with other entrepreneurs? Yeah, I'd say, um, you know, be patient. You, you care about your business more than anybody else does. And so you'll want it to move everything you do at a pace that I think can be unrealistic times. It, it just, everything takes longer than you think, um, which is fine. It's okay. Um, but just, just something to remember and manage your expectations in that regard. Um, my second tip would be people, people, people. Um, you know, ideas are good, but it's all about the team that is going to uh, carry out those ideas and execute. And so I would just be very, very thoughtful um, and spend as much time as you possibly can on building your team and when you're hiring, um, just really, uh, it's never time wasted um, to be very thoughtful um, and diligent in your hiring um, process. And then third, I said, develop a thick skin. You'll get a lot more no's than you will get yeses in life as an entrepreneur. I'm, I'm so unfazed by um, criticism these days, but it's something to just, you know, it's something I've learned in the process. And um, I would say that that's probably my, my third thing is just, you know, believe in what you're doing. Um, don't be deaf to feedback. Take other people's feedback. It's constructive. Is that just a coincidence that you start um, rank and style to rank fashions or stuff in, in the heart of New York? I mean, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's a fun city to do what we do. Um, I mean, we're so constantly mm -hmm. such a visual city and it's a city with a lot of fashion inspiration. And so I'm so glad we're based here and so many of our relationships are based here. What is the number one thing that you're really exciting about your business today? Yeah, I think uh, for me, it's the expansion, uh, expansion opportunities we've had. I wanted to go carefully before we moved on, but I think we've done such a solid job with developing a trusted brand in year one. And I'm so excited to take that and start to launch other verticals and, and expand beyond sort of fashion and beauty for women. The plan to commercialize it to make it profitable and give me some application where would rank and style can make profit from. Yeah, so we generate revenue. All of our top 10 lists um, recommend products that are the best and we um, link out to retailers where you can buy the product and we currently make um, a commission on the, the sales that we drive at our retail partners. But we're also moving into sponsorships, partnerships and are developing a B2B offering where we license out um, aspects of our technology, um, whether it's for advertisers, um, media partners or um, you know retailers and, and brands to use our data feeds to create content um, and marketing campaigns. So along the way, I'm sure that you receive lots of advices and stuff. So what is the best advice that you ever received? I mean, I, I, I would say in my last job, there was a real emphasis on uh, quality and responsiveness and gratitude. And I would say I, um, I really, really am very thoughtful about all three of those things. In terms of quality, we're fiercely um, careful about um, everything from writing an email to how we draft things to how we present things um, in a speech or in press. Or on our site. Um, I think first impressions um, mean a lot and I'm determined to get those um, right. Um, responsiveness, I have a rule of pretty much trying to respond to every email within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and I've had that since I was an attorney 
Um, it's just trained in me, and I, uh, I I try to stick to it as best I can. I don't always, I'm not perfect about it, but I think it it shows when you do, um, and it, it people are more, it just develops the sense of responsibility and credibility that I think is really important um, as, a, as a new um, business owner. And then gratitude. I um, We wouldn't be where we are today without some amazing help along the way from mentors, and I never, ever want to become too busy or big that I can't uh, take the time to be aware of that and um, and be genuinely thankful and express that gratitude. And so, you know, every day I'm always trying to be very, um, you know, conscious of it, but also demonstrate gratitude and, and pay it forward to other young entrepreneurs, help them out, advise them, um, and uh, just be really supportive. So while running that, while running all the experiences of Rangan Style, what is your number one uh, proudest moment as an entrepreneur? I think making Fast Company's list of the 100 most creative people was just such a such a compliment. Um, I have so much respect for that magazine, um, their editorial process, and uh, I think it's a great publication. Um, I've always aspired to the the and been inspired by the people that are in 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 that magazine, and to be one of those um, was just a, a a dream come true. How does it help you and and bring a style brand? Yeah, I, mean, I think it gives us confidence to keep doing what we're doing, but also we it's been just amazing exposure. We get a lot of emails and calls and things like that from people who see us in the magazine and want to find a way to work with us, invest in us. Once again, congratulations to you, you and the team over there. Great work. Great work. Thank you so much. Can you share with the audience one of your personal habits that you that you believe contribute to your work ethics, your gratitude and your success that you have nowadays? Um, I would say um, two things. I uh, I make lists for everything I do. Everything I do is written every day. That's my list for today. Um, and then even while I'm thinking about what I'm doing today, I make lists for Monday. And this way, I don't forget it. But I also, when I'm switching off over the weekend, I won't think about it because I know it's captured. And I know on Monday morning when I when I um, start the day, my agenda for the next week and my priorities and my goals are already um, written out. I, I, I literally write everything down, whether I'm in a meeting um, or on my own. I, I, I always go back to my notes, um, and it means that very little falls through the cracks. And then second, I think, um, is to make sure you take at least an hour a day um, to do uh, something that's just really helpful for you mentally um, and physically and is a break from um, the work you're doing because it's stressful, it's exhausting, it's nonstop. So for me, that's um, that's that's physical. You know, it's fitness. It's going to the gym. It's yoga, um, and I really never compromise on that since I've started this. And uh, no matter how busy I get, that is sacred time that I give myself every morning before I start the day. And I think it makes me um, a better partner, and it makes me a better entrepreneur. Love it, love it. <clears throat> You're still using all the uh, the uh, the paper, but that's awesome. I mean, with the technologies oh, yeah. and all the apps and stuff. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it also means I'm not on my phone all the time, which I like to. Next question is, do you have any internet resources like Evernote uh, that you're in love with and you want to share yeah. with the audience? Yeah, I, I use Evernote a fair amount. Um, but other than that, I'm, I'm pretty committed to my notebook and I, I read a lot of stuff online. I'm always on Mashable, HuffPost, New York Times, New York Magazine. I, I voraciously read because I think it's important to know what's out there. Um, it's a competitive world and it's, you know, the more aware you are, the more um, informed you are and, and you can get ahead of things. Um, but I'm uh, I'm a pretty simple person when it comes to using a lot of technology for workflows. Evernote is, is pretty much my, my go-to. If you had to recommend one book to my audience, what would it be? I'm forgetting the author, but Good to Great is one of my, um, my, my favorites. It's about sort of taking, you know, a, a, a typical company and making it an excellent one. Um, it's probably one of my favorite books. And I, I read it for my last company and it's always stayed with me. This question is a little bit yeah. boozy. So imagine that you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world. It's identical to us, you have, you, but you knew nobody, okay? You still have all the experience, all the knowledge that you have. Your food and shelters will be taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Uh, my first thought would be shopping, but that wouldn't be what I do. Um, gosh, I love it, love it. The first thing is shopping. It's, it's, it's really in line, so in line with what you do. <laughs> um, and that's awesome. So, 
really enjoy listening to, to your journeys and, and uh, the stories that you share with the audience today. So give Success Nation one parting piece of guidance and then share the best way that we can find you and then we can say goodbye. Yeah, sure. So um, you can find us at um, Rank and Style, www.rankandstyle.com. Um, please feel free to email me at um, it's Sarika, S-A-R-I-K-A at rankandstyle.com, R-A-N-K-A-N-D, style.com. Um, and my parting piece of advice um Visit our site and um, and and um, and truly, uh, the world is your oyster. Believe in yourself and and know that um, if you're if you're up for um, the hustle and the execution, you truly can make anything happen um, as long as you're open minded. Where was that? All right. Thanks again for being so generous with your time and your expertise and your your experience and.